then our next question concerns uh, initiations in the future, uh, particularly at that time when you're no longer with us. We want to know how a, a first and second initiation would be conducted. Yes, I can recommend some of you. After this is settled up, I shall recommend some of you to act as uh, officiating Acharya. Is that called Ritvik Acharya? Ritvik, yeah. Forty-two days later, Srila Prabhupada issued a letter through Tamal Krishna to all GBC and temple presidents, starting by mentioning the conversation that took place in Vrindavan on May 28th, which began with the question, then our next question concerns initiations in the future, particularly at the time when you're no longer with us. We want to know how first and second initiation would be conducted. This document, known as the July 9th letter, is Shira Prabhupada's conclusive order, no orders given after that, concerning the method of initiation after his physical departure. This letter was tactfully distributed to a selected few and its straightforward meaning was veiled by the then obscurantist GBC leaders. Shira Prabhupada's final order came to be known of more widely during the mid-90s. Today, still, most of ISKCON devotees have never seen it. July 9, 1977 To all GBC and Temple Presidents, Dear Maharajas and Prabhus, Please accept my humble obeisances at your feet. Recently, when all of the GBC members were with His Divine Grace in Vrindavan, Shira Prabhupada indicated that soon he would appoint some of his senior disciples to act as Ridvik, representative of the Acharya for the purpose of performing initiations, both first initiation and second initiation. His Divine Grace has so far given a list of 11 disciples who will act in that capacity. In the past, temple presidents have written to Shri Prabhupada recommending a particular devotee's initiation. Now that Shri Prabhupada has named these representatives, temple presidents may henceforward send recommendation for first and second initiation to whichever of these 11 representatives are nearest their temple. After considering the recommendation, these representatives may accept the devotee as an initiated disciple of Shri Prabhupada by giving a spiritual name or, in the case of second initiation, by chanting on the Gayatri thread, just as Shri Prabhupada has done. The newly initiated devotees are disciples of His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, the above 11 senior devotees acting as his representative. After the temple president receives a letter from these representatives giving the spiritual name or the thread, he can perform the fire yagya in the temple as was being done before. The name of a newly initiated disciple should be sent by the representative who has accepted him or her to Shira Prabhupada to be included in his Divine Grace Initiated Disciples book. Hoping this finds you all well. Your servant, Tamal Krishna Goswami, Secretary to Shira Prabhupada. Approved by Shri Prabhupada. Jasa Prashada Bhagavat Prashada Yasya Prashada Nagati Kutopi Jasa Prashada Bhagavat Prashada Yasya Prashada Nagati Kutopi Dayam Stubham Tasha or maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, that living guru thing, you know. They say you need to approach 434, you need to approach a spiritual master. Oh. So how to approach him if, it's, uh, if he's not physically there? How, how do I get guided in my spiritual life? You know, it seems to make sense that you have to approach someone to guide you step by step. Uh, spiritual life is basically approaching a spiritual master for knowledge. A spiritual master is not the body, it's actually the knowledge, you know. The Vani, as Prabhupada said, is more important than Vapu. When you feel separation from your spiritual master, you just uh, Try to remember his words of instruction, he will not feel separation. He will feel that he is with you. So we should associate uh, by the vibration, uh, 
as not by the physical presence that is real accessories so bani is more important than the bopu bopu will be finished this is material body it will be finished that is the nature uh, <coughs> but if we keep to the bani to the words of spiritual master uh, <coughs> then we remain very fixed up we are always feeling your presence very strong simply by your teachings and your instruction we are always meditating on your instructions and that is really very very that feeling very not important because as we all know familiarity breeds uh, contempt so if a person is familiar then you tend to you know uh, abuse that relationship whereas when you hear the instruction then you tend to become you know uh, more serious because knowledge is the essential aspect of spiritual life as krishna also said in bhagavad gita chapter 4 text 2 you know evam para para prokta mimam rajurishu viduha sa kaleneha mata yoga nasta parantapaha he said that uh, you this parampara the 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 kings uh, saintly kings heard it vidu heard you know no so it is not that they saw it was more on hearing and then yoga nasta krishna says the body this science has been lost uh, he didn't say the body has been lost he didn't use the word sarira nasta see so therefore also in the bhagavatam uh, 29 uh, there's no difference between the lord and the sound vibration coming from him even though he is not personally present the best way to understand is to accept such divine instruction and brahma the prime spiritual master of everyone is the living example of this process of receiving transcendental knowledge the potency of the transcendental sound is never minimized because the vibrator is ap- apparently absent so at this point so the vani principle is stressed in all our vedic literatures it's, it is said srotravya he says you hear and our shastra are called shruti to be heard you know is never to be seen the seeing thing is never emphasized at all <laughs> and anyway uh, we're looking at the context only shila prabhupad is giving the message you know and everyone is becoming devotees by he reading his books that means reading books means hearing him they're not seeing prabhupad and how is that by not seeing prabhupad they're becoming devotees this is excellent proof that how the vani principle is so potent What about specific guidance on my day-to-day advancement in Krishna consciousness? Morning walk at Chivat Hills Golf Course May 13, 1973, Los Angeles. Uh Paramahamsa Swami was asking this question. Uh Shila Prabhupada, when you are not present, with, not us, present with us, how is it possible? How is it possible to receive instructions? For example, in questions that may arise Well, the questions and answers are there in my books. So the question is that answers are in the books. So to day to day, you just have to read Prabhupada books, and if you don't understand Prabhupada, say you read it again, and the answers are there. So utilize whatever time you find to make a thorough study of my books. Then all your questions will be answered. In my books, the philosophy of Krishna consciousness is explained fully. So, if there is anything which you do not understand, then you simply have to read again and again. By reading daily, the knowledge will be revealed to you, and by this process, your spiritual life will develop. So, where is the question of having no directions? And plus, Krishna also said in the Bhagavad Gita. I mean, the Bhagavatam. There's a verse in the eleven twenty nine six of the Bhagavatam. O oh my Lord. transcendental poets and and experts in spiritual science could not fully express their indebtedness to you 
even if they are endowed with the prolonged life of Brahma, for you appear in two features, externally as the Acharya, internally as a super soul, to deliver the embodied living being by directing him how to come to you. So where is the question of having no guidance? I shall remain your personal guidance, physically present or not. As I am getting personal guidance from my Guru. Even the Guru is not physically present. If you follow the Bani, then you are getting help. Yes, yes. Just like Krishna is guiding us, similarly spiritual master will guide. See, and for that Śrīla Prabhupāda set up the society, even when he was uh, at that time in the material world doing his pastimes, uh, he set up the temples uh, where the temple president and secretary and everybody run the society. And if anyone comes, they give the guidance physically, like for example, how to put tilak and how to work, how to chant pro you know, all that, he, the basic things are guided because he trained them up. And he was not physically with each and every one of us. See, but that instruction is flowing. Why would Prabhupada do away with the system of disciplic succession that has been kept for millions of years? How is it is he throwing away when you say that he has introduced a system whereby he is still giving you the transcendental knowledge? Even let's say that you talk about the present guru system, they are telling you that we are only bringing you to Prabhupada. And they are advising you to read Prabhupada books. So knowledge is coming from who? From Prabhupada. So if you say we are throwing a system, then we should do away with Prabhupada totally. We have not. What is Diksha? Diksha is the process by which one can awaken his transcendental knowledge and vanquish all reactions caused by sinful activity. A person expert in the study of the revealed scriptures knows this process as Diksha. Diksha means receiving transcendental knowledge, thus becoming freed from sinful reactions. How to receive transcendental knowledge? As Brahmaji received knowledge directly from the Lord by satisfying Him fully, similarly one has to receive the transcendental knowledge from the spiritual master by satisfying Him. The spiritual master's satisfaction is the means of assimilating transcendental knowledge. The spiritual master's satisfaction is the means of assimilating transcendental knowledge. How to satisfy the spiritual master? One should strictly adhere to the instructions of the spiritual master. For if he is pleased, certainly the Supreme Personality of Godhead is pleased. Yasya prasadat bhagavad prasado, yasya prasadan nagati kutopi. By strictly following his instructions, one pleases the spiritual master, thus pleasing Krishna. Can one please the spiritual master after his disappearance? Guru Kripa only comes by pleasing the spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada? Otherwise how? Excuse me? Otherwise how it can come? So those disciples who don't have opportunity to uh, see you or speak with you? That he has speaking. Bani and Bopu. Even if you don't see his body, you take his heart. Bani. But how do they know they're pleasing you, Srila Prabhupada? If you actually follow the words of Guru, uh, that means he's pleased. <coughs> if you do not follow, how you can... <coughs> not only that, but your mercy is spread everywhere. And, and if we take advantage, you told us once, then we will feel the uh, result. <coughs> yeah. My Guru Maharaj passed in 1936, and I started this movement in 1965, 30 years after. Mm. Then I am getting the mercy of Guru. Huh? Yes. This is Bani. Yes. Even the Guru is not physically present. If you follow the Bani, then you are getting help. If one follows the Vani, he will receive Guru Kripa. Diksha means receiving transcendental knowledge, thus becoming freed from sinful reactions. The spiritual master's satisfaction is the means of assimilating transcendental knowledge. By strictly following his instructions, one pleases the spiritual master, thus pleasing Krishna. 
If one follows the Vani, he will receive Guru Kripa. So we are interested in getting transcendental knowledge and that is coming from Prabhupada. That everybody cannot deny that. Okay. So when you get knowledge, only then your heart can become purified. Transcendental knowledge we are talking about, not mundane knowledge. That's why Krishna also stressed in Bhagavad Gita 4.34, Tadvidi Parni Patena Pariprasne Sevaya Upadeshanti Te Gyanam Gyanina Tattva Darshina is talking about the self-realized soul imparting you knowledge. That means you are going to a person, approaching him for knowledge. But today's system of communication is that Prabhupada's speeches are recorded. They are so advanced. They manage to record everything and keep in tapes, in, 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 in data and so many things which are accessible even though you are not with him uh, 50, 60 years ago, but you still can get his association. So how is it that you are, you have, you are breaking the tradition? The tradition all along has been to impart this knowledge. Krishna imparted the knowledge to Brahma and Brahma did not see him. Prahlad Maharaj received knowledge from Narada Muni. Uh, and he did not even see him. When he was in the womb of his mother, Prahlad Maharaj listened to the words of Narada Muni. One cannot imagine how the baby in embryo could hear Narada, but this is spiritual life. Progress in spiritual life cannot be obstructed by any material condition. This is called Ahaituki Apratihata. Reception of spiritual knowledge is never checked by any material condition. Uh. So it is not the question of some physical, uh, you know, personality that you must approach for knowledge. That is not supported in the Vedic scriptures. Vedic scriptures support that you hear. How you hear, that's another thing. But you must hear from a pure devotee, a Tattva Darsi. And a Tattva Darsi is qualified in the Bhagavad Gita in 639 as someone who sees Krishna uh, everywhere. If someone is seeing Krishna, then he's never lost. Because he's on the transcendental consciousness, he's talking to Krishna, therefore he's giving you Krishna's direct message. Definition of Tadva Darshi A real preacher cannot be bogus. He must first of all realize Lord Vishnu as he is, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Upadekshanti te gyanam gyanina stadva darshinaha. One who has seen the truth can impart knowledge. The word Tadva Darshi refers to one who has perfectly realized the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such a person can become a guru and propound Vaishnava philosophy all over the world. But if you are not seeing Krishna and talking to Krishna, then how you can impart this transcendental knowledge? That is bogus. The Vedic system is talking about imparting transcendental knowledge. You understand? Divya Gyan. The word is used Divya. Divya doesn't mean mundane stuff. Divya means what? Transcendental. Correct? And that's why Sukracharya has been rejected. Bali Maharaj rejected Sukracharya, his so-called physical guru, because he was speaking nonsense. Don't go to Krishna. And as a result, he rejected him. This is all Shastra. So we cannot rely on this, uh, this physical, physical thing. And plus, you can see, today's modern civilization is so advanced that everybody is connected not by what? Physical thing. Huh? All your gadgets, Facebook, this book, that book, everything is based on hearing or more or less seeing your data, something. Is it not? Is it not? If instructions are more important, why not then follow a previous Acharya like Narada Muni or Lord Brahma? As already stated, Brahma is the original spiritual master for the universe and since he was initiated by Lord himself, the message of Srimad Bhagavatam is coming down by disciplic succession. And in order to receive the real message of the Srimad Bhagavatam, one should approach the current link of spiritual master in the chain of disciplic succession. So you have to go to the current link. Suppose I have heard something from my spiritual master. So I speak to you the same thing. So this is parampara system. You cannot imagine what my spiritual master said. Or even if you read some books, you cannot understand unless you understand it from me. This is called parampara system. 
you cannot jump over to the superior guru, uh, I want to say, neglecting the next ajar, immediate next ajar. You cannot jump the link, that's not possible. And for that example, if we were to read Bhaktisiddhanta Siddhanta's books, we won't be able to understand. This is clear example of how we cannot jump the link. Because the knowledge must be coming. So if you can receive the knowledge, that means you are properly connected. Now, although you may read Rupa Goswami's uh, Ujjwala, what, Nilamani and all that, but it's, uh, you can't understand this. What then thousands of years from now? Does this mean that the disciplic succession ends with Srila Prabhupada? The disciplic succession is not under the purview of any ordinary team, Tom, Dick and Harry. The spiritual disciplic succession is uh, under the control of the Lord. He decides when to revive, when to, to, to close it down, that is up to Him. You understand? You, we are conditioned souls. That's why He says in the Bhagavad Gita, Dharma Samstapanartaya, to re establish this disciplic chain, I appear. So it is not our business, it's Krishna's business. He is more interested in taking up the disciplic succession than you and me who are running to the factory and office day and night and we are now worrying about disciplic succession. Please, I think it's very irrelevant. Right now we should try to learn how to save ourselves and not worry about 10,000 years from now, you know. What is that? That is not within our jurisdiction anyway. <laughs> right now we are here present <laughs> that we got Prabhupada. Now why we want to waste our time in trying to see where, you know, to speak of unnecessary, you know, irrelevant uh, inquiries rather than to worry about ourselves to get out first. <laughs> is it not practical? In our parampara's history, there's never been an example of the Ritvik system. There's always been a physical guru. Regarding parampara system, there's nothing to wonder for big gaps. The Gita was taught to the sun god some millions of years ago, but Krishna has mentioned only three names in the parampara system, namely Vivashvan, Manu and Ikshvaku. And so these gaps do not hamper from understanding the parampara system. We have to pick up from the prominent Acharya and follow from him. And also the example of uh, Ramanuja Acharya and Yamunaja Acharya. Yamunaja Acharya went in his spiritual master already left the body. See, just like Brahma, he did not see Lord Krishna and he heard the word. Just because he heard from Brahma and I did not see Krishna, that means his potency is lost. It doesn't work like that. The spiritual life, the Lord is always in the heart of the living entity. See? So he is directing. How to save the conditioned soul is his prerogative, not ours or yours or anybody. <laughs> you understand this? And spiritual life it only can happen by the connection with spiritual master. See? And spiritual master not necessarily must be physically present. He has to give you that sound vibration. So many of you have not seen Prabhupada. A clear example and you read his books. And your life has changed. Your life has not changed because you met some other devotees in the line. This is not a fact. His books are the ones that are changing to life. So how is it not practical? It's very practical. Fifty years down the line, most of you have not even seen Prabhupada. For even my case, I have not even seen him when I was joining up at that time. It doesn't mean that I'm pretty much bogus because I didn't associate with him. No. This is not a very valid uh, statement. Does Prabhupada have the right to do such a change? In this uh, verse, 10 to 31, he very nicely explained this point. O oh Lord, you who resemble the shining sun, you are always ready to fulfill the desire of your devotee, and therefore you are known as a desire tree, Vancha Kalpataru. When Acharyas complete take shelter, under your lotus feet, in order to cross the fierce ocean of Nisain, they leave behind the, on earth the method by which they cross. And because you are very merciful to your other devotees, you accept this method to help them. This is a very important point. So Prabhupada is leaving us a system to help us. This is the symptom of an Acharya. An Acharya who comes for the service of the Lord cannot be expected to conform to some stereotype for he must find the ways and means by which Krishna consciousness may be spread. 
Every Acharya has a specific means for propagating his spiritual movement with the aim of bringing men to Krishna consciousness. Therefore, the method of one Acharya may be different from that of another, but the ultimate goal is never neglected. As Hari is free to act as he likes, the empowered spiritual master is also free. As Hari is not subject to mundane rules and regulations, the spiritual master empowered by him is also not subject. Because he is an Acharya who knows past, present, future. So he knows very well uh, how degraded the society is going to become. Many more conditioned souls are more and more, you know, having a lot of demonic qualities are going to take birth. So knowing these conditions, to keep that uh, spiritual uh, flow, the spiritual message flowing, Prabhupada has introduced this system. As you can see nowadays, let's say even uh, 50 years ago, and the guru falling down is unheard of. Now even in the, what do you call that, uh, very strict maths like the Madhva math or the Ramanuja math, all, very, they follow very so strictly, they are acharyas also falling down. With the symptom of this age, in Kali Yuga, all these things are going to be happening in a more very, you know, what's a lucid manner. Everybody is going to uh, see there's so many fall downs. You know. So people are losing faith. So to keep that spiritual integrity, you know, safe and solid, Prabhupada has introduced this system. Just like he's, in this verse, the purport, he says about the 16 rounds. In the purport of this verse, he says, The Acharya's duty is therefore to find the means by which devotees may render service according to reference from Sastra. Rupas Goswami, for example, in order to help subsequent devotees published uh, such devotional books as Bhakti Rasa and the Sindhu. This is the duty of the Acharya to publish books that will help future candidates take up the method of service and become eligible to return home back to Godhead. By the mercy of the Lord... Acharyas publish books to give the method, according to time, circumstances and candidate, to go back to Godhead. But in our movement, Krishna conscious movement, the same path has been prescribed and followed. Thus, the devotees have been advised to refrain from four sinful activities, illicit sex, intoxication, meat-eating and gambling, and, not, and to chant 16 rounds a day. These are bona fide instructions. Current bona fide method, four regulative principles and 16 rounds. Krishna accepts a devotee who strictly follows the regulative principle and the method prescribed in the various books and literature published by the authorities. The Acharya gives the suitable method for crossing the ocean on Nisan by accepting the boat of the Lord's lotus feet. And if this method is strictly followed, the followers will ultimately reach the destination by the grace of the Lord. This method is called Acharya Sampradaya. Acharya Sampradaya process by which Krishna accepts a strict follower of the method given by the Acharya. It is therefore said, Sampradaya vinahe mantra te nispalamataha Patma Puranam. The Acharya Sampradaya is strictly bona fide, therefore one must accept the Acharya Sampradaya, otherwise one's endeavor will be futile. Srila Rarutam Das Thakur therefore sing, Tandera janana sena bhakta sanivas janame janame ho e abilas uh, one must worship the lotus feet of the Acharya and live within the society of devotees, then one's endeavor to cross over Nisans will surely be successful. If Acharya Sampradaya is not accepted, all one's endeavor are futile. Two things needed, worship of the lotus feet of the Acharya and live within the society of devotees. Then one is sure to go back home, back to Godhead. So from here is can clearly it's clearly evident that if 16 round is fully endorsed by Prabhupada and he is claimed himself with the Acharya of the Sampradaya who is authorized to make adjustment for the conditioned soul like us, then why the Ritwik system that he has so much given, clearly written in so many ways, and you know, in a, you know, July 9 letter, the, the will, everything shows. In Prabhupada's Declaration of Will, point 3, there is a statement concerning the directors designated to manage the properties in India. In the event of death or failure to act for any reason of any of the said directors, a successor director or directors may be appointed by the remaining directors, provided the new director is my initiated disciple, following strictly all the rules. While Prabhupada was reading the draft of his will prepared by Giridharj Swami, he ordered that the word N be changed to my initiated disciple. This is only possible if the Ritvik system of initiation is followed. And why we should deny that? 
You know, Prabhupada did not transgress from the Vedic system at any point of the time. When he started the movement, you have to remember that he was already almost 70 years old. So his uh, departing from the world was always, it was imminent. You know, it's not a forgotten fact that he he's oblivious to the fact he's going to leave his body. He was always knowing that I'm an old man, I will pass away, you all are young, you should carry on the movement. So he had all that ready in the mind. So he started the program by first giving the initiation, giving the name and giving the, you know, chanting on the beats. Then as he progressed, he asked the president to do the fire sacrifice. Uh, and then he delegated that to the president. And then as things progressed more, he delegated the chanting on the beach to the senior man. See, so he kept the giving the name. Yes, and then when he came to the point where he was going to depart, he entrusted to some representative also. So he was an online thing going from the day one. Although to encourage the disciple, he said, yeah, when you all are qualified, you can initiate. But, but on qualification, well, who's qualified? We can see the, the, the result of that uh, catastrophe of taking this prematurely uh, is so much disastrous. If there are any defects within our society, it is only symptom that the instructions of the spiritual master are being neglected. As soon as a foolish disciple tries to overtake his spiritual master and becomes ambitious to occupy his post, he immediately falls down. Anyone, if he is a pure devotee, he can deliver others, he can become spiritual master. But unless he is on that platform, he should not attempt it. Then both of them will go to hell, like blind men leading the blind. He is not a liberated person, and therefore he cannot initiate any person to Krishna consciousness. It requires special spiritual benediction from higher authorities. When one has attained the topmost position of Mahabhagavata, he is to be accepted as a guru and worshipped exactly like Hari, the personality of Godhead. Only such a person is eligible to occupy the post of a guru. Maybe not all his Khan gurus are bona fide, but aren't some of them worth following? Oh. If moment you don't obey the order of the spiritual master, you're considered fallen. If you don't follow the instruction of guru, then you are fallen down. Immediately. If one is disobeying, the spiritual master, he cannot remain in the pure status of life. He cannot be Sikha Guru or anything else. He's finished immediately. That's there. When you disobey the order of the spiritual master, you become useless. You understand? It is explained in 7, 15, uh, 26, 27 in the purport. If you change a little bit, then you're totally deviated. So you cannot say that because, you know, they are not, not fall down. The fall down is already there. For the spiritual life of a disciple, the one who disobeys the order of the spiritual master, then he will encounter so many problems in his spiritual life. In the May 28th conversation, Prabhupada mentions the word grand disciple. Yeah, this has been a very big uh, misleading uh, uh, part on the... On the Iskan leaders because they highlight this grand disciple and they play down my order. Prabhupada said, yes, when I order you, you become guru. When I order you become guru, he becomes regular guru. That's all. But where is the order? You don't forget that in the beginning of the conversation, there was a question on how to perform initiation, particularly when you are no longer here with us. And Prabhupada said, yes, I will appoint some of you to act as officiating Acharya. And Ritwik, yes, Ritwik, that's, was the, that was the question in the beginning. So then when they asked about initiating and the disciple and grand disciple, Prabhupada, yes, but when I order you. So he put this order in front. So if he's in the, initially he's been asked about initiation and he said, this is the system. And then when he speak about grand disciple, he even speak in the more futuristic stand of, I'm ordering you, when is the order? A self-made guru cannot be guru. He must be authorized by the bona fide guru, then he is guru. A guru can become guru when he is ordered by his guru, that's all. By this glory or faith, they wanted to create artificial somebody and everything came. They did not consider, even with common sense, that if Guru Maharaj was there, 
to uh, appoint somebody as Atadu. Why did he not say? He said so many things. And this point he missed. The real point. There is no order except the July 9 letter, which clearly spell out that you have to follow the Ritvik system when Prabhupada, you know, leaves the planet. There is no other instruction after that. Prabhupada often said, you all become guru. What about this and all other similar statements that he made? That is the general thing, that this is a law of disciplic succession, that you have to become gurus. But becoming guru means you have to become a first-class person, whether you are a first-class devotee. So far designation is concerned, the spiritual master authorizes every one of his disciples. Yeah. But it is up to the disciple uh, to carry out the order. He wants that each and every one of his disciples become as powerful as he is, or more than that. That is his desire. Mm. Just like father wants every son to be as qualified or more qualified than the father. But it is up to the student, up to the son, to raise himself to that standard. Prabhupada desired his disciples to initiate after his physical departure as will be seen in further quotes, provided they raise themselves to that standard. Guru desires that his disciples become like him. Disciples raise themselves by following instructions. Guru empowers qualified disciples to initiate. Desire does not equal order. Chronological display of Prabhupada's statements concerning future gurus. By 1975, all of those who have passed all the above examinations will be specifically empowered to initiate. Now the time is approaching very soon when you will have many disciples by your strong preaching work. In these statements, Prabhupada clearly speaks of his disciples one day becoming Diksha Gurus. In his spiritual master absence or disappearance, you can accept disciples without any limitation. This is the law of disciplic succession. I want to see my disciples become bona fide spiritual master. By the end of 1975, still no disciples had passed the aforementioned examinations, but still, Srila Prabhupada expressed his desire to see them succeed. Do you expect to, uh, to name one person as your successor, or have you already? That I am not contemplating now, uh, but there is no need of one person, as other things are managed by committee, so this can also be managed. Will there be one spiritual leader, though? I am training GBC 18 all over the world. By then, it was clear that Srila Prabhupada wanted his disciples, the GBC members, to guide and manage ISKCON for lack of qualified disciples to become Acharyas, as did Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati. He requested his disciples to form a strong governing body for preaching the cult of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He never recommended anyone to be Acharya of the Gaudiya Math. If Guru Maharaj could have seen someone who was qualified at the time to be Acharya, he would have mentioned. He said openly, you make a GBC and conduct the mission. Well, I have studied myself and all of your disciples and I, it's clear fact that we are all conditioned souls, so we cannot be glued. Maybe one day it may be possible, but mm. not now. Yes. I can do it. Now we do it. I can say, now we become a child. We become a child. I am waiting for it. Become all our child. Prabhupada here confirms that all his disciples were still conditioned souls. Nevertheless, he states that he's waiting to give his authorization. I should have done it in summer. Uh, appreciating our child. Is that called Ritvik Acharya? Ritvik, yeah. On July 9th of the year 1977, Shira Prabhupada bestowed upon his disciple his incontrovertible command, stating that he solely is to remain the Diksha Guru of ISKCON. And nobody is going to stand <laughs> make your own claim. And continue to become this thing. 
The only authorization given by Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada is to follow the Ridvik system of initiation. If you disobey the order of the spiritual master, then there's no auspicious uh, spiritual advancement for the disciple. Some devotees say that if ISKCON gurus are falling down, it is due to the influence of Kali Yoga. Prabhupada said guru means he cannot fall down. A spiritual master is always liberated. The pure devotee is always free from the clutches of Maya and her influence. A bona fide spiritual master is in the disciplic succession from time eternal, and he does not deviate at all from the instructions of the Supreme Lord. There's no such thing as Kali Yuga and some Guru, and this is all speculation. Guru means, must be beyond the three modes of material nature. And it's explained in the verse in 3, 27, 26. The influence of material nature cannot harm an enlightened soul, even though he engaged in material activities, because he knows the truth of the Absolute and his mind is fixed on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So there is no question of a fall down of a Guru who is a transcendentally situated. One who has taken exclusive shelter of the Supreme Lord, Vasudev, becomes free from fruitive activities, which are based on material lust. In fact, one who has taken shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord is freed from even the desire to enjoy material sense gratification. Plans for enjoying sex life, social prestige, and money cannot develop within his mind. Thus, he is considered Bhagavatotam, a pure devotee of the Lord on the highest platform. But if you take a third class guru and he falls down, then it's your misfortune. Because it is advised by Prabhupada clearly in the nectar of instruction, mantra, five, that one should take a Uttama Adhikari as a spiritual master. He, although he said a second class and third class can initiate, but because of their insufficient guidance, you cannot make good advancement. Therefore, you must take a first class devotee as your spiritual master. There are three classes of devotees, and the Guru must be accepted from the topmost class. Only such a person is eligible to occupy the post of a Guru. As for your next question, can only a few pure devotees deliver others? Anyone, if he is a pure devotee, he can deliver others. He can become spiritual master. But unless he is on that platform, he should not attempt it. Then both of them will go to hell, like blind men leading the blind. So the first class spiritual master is already there. You are coming through him. Now all you have to do is follow instruction with him and go on. What's the problem? If you want some physical association, the temple is there. There's so many hundreds of devotees you can associate and learn from as a humble Vaishnav. What's the problem? What's the problem? And if one encouragement, there's so many devotees to encourage you. I don't see any problem in that. I'm first, I'm, I'm personally have lived with the system for the past 40 years. I don't see any problem with it. In fact, we have started many temples on these principles and they are all going very nicely in China, in India, Philippines, Bangladesh even, and also India, Australia, New Zealand. So what's the problem? I don't see any problem. If one finds a first-class devotee besides Prabhupada, is it okay to take initiation from him? That's okay, we have no objection. But it's not within his con, it's outside. If there is a pure devotee, then nobody is going to stop you, <coughs> if you can find one. But pure devotees are not searched by you, they're sent by Krishna. This is important, you see. I send the pure devotee to you. Yashya Prasada, Bhagavad Prasada, Yashya Prasada Nagadir Goti. By the mercy of Guru, you get Krishna. And by mercy of Krishna, you get Guru. And by mercy of Guru, you also get Krishna. You see, as you can see in Durva Maharaj, he was going to the forest. Krishna sent Dar Narada Muni to him. There's so many examples. What role did Srila Prabhupada give the GBC? I can read that to you probably. So the GBC has been established by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada to represent Him in carrying out the responsibility of managing the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, of which He is the founder, Acharya and Supreme Authority. The GBC accepts <coughs> as His life and soul His Divine Instruction and recognize that it is completely dependent on His mercy in all respect. The GBC has no other function or purpose other than to execute the instruction so kindly given by His Divine Grace and preserve and spread His teaching to the world in their pure form. 
definition of GBC, resolution number one, GBC minute, 1975. Their purpose is to carry out the instruction of Srila Prabhupada. They're not there to change, uh, manufacture, uh, that, that's not their role. You see, they are to maintain his teaching as their life and soul. You know, now the GBCs are changing. And uh, that is not the, the instruction given by Prabhupada to them. It's clearly said in this resolution. For example, trying to implement a woman gurus or trying to, you know, do so many things which is not authorized by him. So this changing aspect is not in their jurisdiction. Is it okay? He will start again. Both sastrically and with evidence uh, letters. So we'll start again at five, I think. Samsara Dava Nalanita Loka Tranaya Karunyagana Ganatva Samsara Dava Nalanita Loka Tranaya Pratasya Kalya Naguna Navasya Vande Guru Sri Chananara Vinda Pratasya Kalya Naguna Navasya Vande Guru Sri Chananara Vinda Chagita Vaditra Majan Manasura Sena Mahaprabhu Kitanani Chagita Vaditra Majan Manasura Sena Chakamha Shutaranga Pajo Vande Guru 